or sequences that you were in, what was your favorite? Oh, I really loved working with Wayne. I did. As soon as I, you know, as soon as I joined the cast, I thought, oh, this guy is he's such the man for me. <laughs> um, he, I thought Wayne concocted such a such a wonderful, one of the all-time great villains. Um, I was talking about this yesterday in the panel. And so, yeah, I kind of planted a couple of seeds in the writers' heads. I kind of flirted with it a little bit, threw him a couple of glances, went Sputnik. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that. I also enjoyed working uh, any of the wise stuff I got to do. I didn't get to do an awful lot of it, but all that walking on wood stuff, it's so otherworldly. I mean, on what other show are you ever going to be able to do that kind of stuff? So, so yeah, the real physical stuff was, was heaps of fun on Farscape. Really lucky. Dramas, it, it just doesn't happen. Science fiction, Farscape, we got to play like that. It was a real gift. Really lucky. They were, they were the favourites. They were the standouts. The, oh, the other ones, sorry. The other ones when we all got together, we all got to play together. I, I really liked that too. You know, the whole cast in Moy there in command, I thought they were fun too. Lots of antics. <laughs> <laughs> antics with Anthony. Oh, gee. Antics, yes. Just on the topic of Wayne, I was curious, Ben, if you worked with him to come up with an impression of him, or did you just stay at home and bust out your Scorpius one day? <laughs> Saying, oh, busting out your Scorpius one day. <laughs>
Hi, I was wondering, uh, Farscape seemed like it was such a fun show to be working on, and I was wondering if there were any kind of uh, behind-the-scenes antics or any kind of anything that was just kind of fun going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, Anthony Simcoe, who played Nargo. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> It seems like every sci-fi show they have a big guy, this stubby warrior, who who is the prankster on set, <laughs> who is the one driving the humor and comedy. I, I guess because they're being stoned all the time, it's like it's like letting it's like letting the, the lid off of a can of coke that you shook up or something. <laughs> and and, and Ant was that way. He has this abusive, huge personality. For those of you who see him on stage, you know what we're talking about. Uh, he just had this tremendous energy, but it's a huge burden wearing prosthetics and makeups. Uh, and in spite of that, Anthony would come in and he would just do the most insane things. But the, the one sort of quintessential vision of Anthony that you get, by the time we got to the third season, in the first season they put Anthony in his prosthetics and it was all one piece, he never got out of it. And so he's locked in this massive rubber bit and they would sort of wheel him on the set. <laughs> and in the second season, he, uh, we were working in very hot sheds in Homebush in Sydney, Australia, and he, he literally uh, fainted from exhaustion and dehydration, and they hauled him off in an ambulance. And so they came back and said, we've got to figure out a way to fix this. So his costume gradually got whittled down. His makeup got whittled down. So by the final year, he would show up to set for rehearsals wearing his eyebrows, his chin, his nose, and that was it. There was no, you know, uh, costume? No. <laughs> Headpiece? No. It was just Gargo's face would show up on this big blokey Australian dude. <laughs> and he would stand around in his flip flops and a pair of boxer shorts. <laughs> and that's it. And they'd rehearse the scene, and they'd go, Gargo, up. And 15 minutes later, Gargo would appear in full battle regalia. And they would do his thing, and then they, as soon as they called cut, Dargo down! And they would strip him down again, and they would take the usher in his shorts. <laughs> he was very funny. But there was a, always a lot of talk of butter and last tango in Paris with uh, with, Dargo, with Anthony. One person said, thank you very much. Butter? Butter. And last tango in Paris. Paris. He, don't you remember, he used to talk about uh, what he would do to the marauder chicks, exactly, in detail, and it always involved butter. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm like, you're all close that. He's here, he's fine. That's yeah. great. Yeah. You're here, trying to keep a straight face. <laughs>